we're up to 30 here. Found 30, found 30, 30 so far. Morales? Uh, yep. Nice. Yeah, they're, they're, just, just, they're already just popping down there, huh? Yeah, they just started. Oh. We've been we've been getting a ton of rain, uh, and we finally got a couple of good sunny days, so they just started popping pretty good. What the earliest that you'll find them there? The earliest? Well, it just depends on how warm it is. This is probably a little bit later than normal, honestly, because uh, it seems to me like we stayed cool later in February than we usually do. We usually start to get a real good green up in late February. And it kind of didn't come until early March, like maybe a week or 10 days or so later than it usually does. Uh, so I think things are a little bit behind what they usually are, what they have been, at least in the past seven or eight years. Um, but the earliest, I'd say, would be early March. You might find some if we get a real warm year. So it's like a, a hard pill to swallow for me that you guys like. Your whole mushroom season is come and gone by the time they even start popping in like South Dakota when I lived there. But now that I'm at a, a higher elevation, um, people are grabbing them all the way through June. So it's really, uh, yeah, it's pretty wild. Sometimes the mushroom season here starts um, like when the one in South Dakota would be finishing up. So it, it's like now about adjusting my mindset to get excited about it at a totally different time of year, which is uh, it, it's different. Now, I, I'm only familiar with uh, some bolites and morels. I've never actually mm -hmm. eaten any other wild mushrooms. What are your favorites aside from morels? My favorites, um, probably my absolute favorite outside of a morel would be like an oyster. Um, and, and for this reason, because uh, they are so easy to work with in the kitchen, you can do like a number of different applications with them. They're good on like a steak or a burger. Uh, you could toss them in a sauce. You could put them in a pasta. Um, you could deep fat fry them. Oysters just have like a ton of applications, which is one of the things that makes morale so great. Uh, oysters also have like a super long growing season. So you can come across them in April. You can come across them all the way till August. Um, and they're kind of predictable. They only grow on down trees. They typically show up shortly after a rain. Uh, so I love oysters. Other than that, chicken in the woods are great. Um, that's uh, like a, a regional mushroom for time of year wise. So there's some places right now that'll be grabbing chicken in the woods, but then there's other uh, states that you don't see them until fall. And a chicken in the woods is like one of, I think it's called like the foolproof five mushrooms. It's one of them that you can't confuse with anything else. And so you know what you're looking at. Um, and you always have enormous bounties of chicken in the woods. It's never like you find two or three of them and go home and it's just like a snack. If you find a chicken in the woods patch, uh, you could like feed a whole neighborhood with those things. So chicken in the woods are great. Besides those, uh, shaggy manes, I really love shaggy manes. Those are like a super common mushroom. Um, you could probably walk out to your backyard right now, Josh, and, and find a few of them. They grow in disturbed areas. So bike paths, uh, game trails, you'll find them in backyards and ditches, things like that. Those are super easy to identify. They grow in very obvious places. And again, those are really easy to work with in the kitchen. Um, great in pastas and on burgers, things like that. Um, but there's are probably... The ones that, are those the ones that you can't drink alcohol when you eat them? So it, there's there's like a whole bunch of mushrooms that they say that about. Um, I don't want to eat those. And, yeah, it's 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 less true um, as like an overarching rule, and it's more of like a very personal thing. And so uh, it's even common with like morales. If that the seven of us ate morales and we all drank five beers with it, one of us might get sick, but the other six won't. And it's it's less to do with like the mushroom and more to deal with the, like how your body digest the mushrooms so with any mushroom if you do like decide to expand and, and go beyond just morales <clears throat> that's something that i would recommend is that even if it's a, a choice edible that uh everybody eats just only have a little bit at first uh only drink a little bit of alcohol with them see if your body has any kind of negative reaction and then you'll find a like kind of feel comfortable beyond that <clears throat> I don't think that's the way any of us are going to approach it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just, just like two bites and one beer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Probably not going to happen. Two bites and six beers. There you go. <laughs> Whatever got you into hunting mushrooms? Um, 
I didn't like, well, well, I love eating mushrooms. Like they, they're, I I love having mushrooms on hand and, and throwing them in with any dish I'm making, but it bothered me to be in the woods and see something that I couldn't identify, like not know what it was. Um, and so then I just like got really into it so I could always like confidently look at something and, and know what it was. And if I, if I had to eat it, that I could and things like that. And so I, uh, I don't like feeling dumb about something when I'm in the woods and there's so many kinds of mushrooms and stuff like that. So I bought a field guide. I educated myself that way. Um, I joined a mycology club now in Montana. I'm part of the Southwest Montana Mycological Association. Um, so there's, there's ways of learning like that. And now I'm kind of going through that phase with rocks. Um, I just bought a rock hound book, uh, because I hate like looking at like a boulder and not knowing what it is or finding like potentially a piece of petrified wood and not knowing if it's a piece of petrified wood or not. Um, and so I want to like really brush up on that next because you come across a lot of that cool stuff out here in Montana. Yeah. Cool. Do you, uh, find any wild asparagus? When I lived in South Dakota, I did. Um, that was like more competitive than mushroom hunting even because they grew in such obvious places. Everybody knew which ditches had it. Everyone knew which fence lines to look at, um, things like that. Now that I'm out here, um, I I haven't looked yet. I'm sure if I drive some, some gravel roads here in about a month, I could find some, but I, I I do dig asparagus. Um, I have a a bigger backyard now than I had when I lived in South Dakota. So I'm actually going to plant some here. Um, won't truly be wild asparagus, but I'll have some on hand. Nice. It's hard to beat. Have you had any bad experiences with mushrooms? Like bad experiences. Know. Yeah. Um, not, not from like, um, an edibility standpoint. I've had some things where like, um, I picked some bullet mushrooms and I brought them home and I put them in my refrigerator and then I woke up the next morning and there was like thousands of little grubs crawling around my refrigerator um, because like <laughs> mushrooms tend to be really good places to live for small organisms. And so I've done the same thing with like um, chicken in the woods. I picked chicken in the woods, brought those home. Um, and then I found a lizard in my car that was living <laughs> in the mushrooms. And so some things like that, but I, I haven't yet eaten the wrong thing yet. There's, there's like this, there's this old saying and it's uh, that there are old mushroom hunters, there are bold mushroom hunters, but there are no old, bold mushroom hunters. So <laughs> I, I've always then been uh, quite cautious with what I've eaten, but I've probably eaten uh, like 15 different kinds of wild mushrooms. Nice. Yeah. Okay, impressive. impressive. That's cool, man. I really like, I, I, I haven't personally gotten into that real heavy yet, going out and actually hunting them. But that's something I've always been fascinated in. I took a class in school, a uh, mycology class, and I thought it was amazing. But yeah, I always, I always just got a little concerned. Like, <laughs> a lot of field guide. Yeah, there, there's a lot of good field guides. Um, there's you can buy just like one mega book that has every mushroom in North America, or there's always things that are specific to your region. Um, so, like now I have a, a Montana mycology book that's more specific to here. It's a lot easier to identify things. Um, so that would be my advice to somebody buy one specific to your region. And it's not even necessarily like going out and mushroom hunting. It's, uh, just going out for a hike, going out to look for sheds or, uh, walk in the riverbank or whatever. And you see something there and it's just like a nice little bonus on all those trips where you otherwise don't come home with anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's, that's like the, that's the best part of spring Turkey season is that it's like a scavenger hunt. Yeah. You get out and walk around. You might find a shed, find some mushrooms. Uh, so, what is your take on when you pick a morel? Are you cutting it or are you pulling it? Oh, I cut it. I cut it. Yeah. Um, I didn't know there was an argument for pulling it. Do some people do that? It takes all kinds. <laughs> That's right. That's right. So does that no. actually have an effect on whether they grow there again or not? If you pull the roots, is that known for them not to grow there again then? Is that true? Yeah, if if you if you leave the I think it's called the vulva. If you leave that in the ground, um, that just increases the odds of it growing again there next year. It's not a guaranteed thing, and like nothing with 
wild mushrooms is a guaranteed thing. You can have some spots where you pick 10 pounds of mushrooms one year, you go back uh, 12 months later, they should be there again, but they're not. Um, so there's, there's just a lot of that kind of thing with mushrooms, but it's just like, uh, an added little bit insurance that, that you can find those mushrooms again next year. And it's just like, it, it, it's not conservation friendly because mushrooms don't like add that much, but there's potential there. It's like catching a fish and throwing it back. Uh, somebody else can get that fish and maybe next year or years later, someone else can, can get that mushroom. It's the same reason that a lot of people, when they pick a morel, We'll carry them around in like a mesh bag, hoping that those trillions of uh, like spores are, are dispersing as you're walking. I don't know if there's any truth to that, uh, but I appreciate that people do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That seems like I read an article one time several years ago about the argument between cutting cutting the stem and, and pulling them up by the root, saying something about a, a possible infection in the mycelium. Mm. I, I, I don't have any knowledge of that. Uh, yeah. I, I have, if that's the case, then I'm guilty for cutting every mushroom <laughs> I've ever picked. So I cut them. I cut them too, but I just, I that's, too, yeah. yeah, that was the origin of that thought.